Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and today we're working on something a little bit different. I'm kind of sick of Floral Friday florals, so let's do the florals with a little element of an animal. Um, this is a squirrel, and I go over how I do this step by step. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, if you haven't hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up, please hit that so you know when they're up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive content. Uh, every Thursday I did a really great one this week, so you check it out. And uh, live stream once a month in the top tier as well as a download from me. It's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out right here. Boop. And yeah, so let's get started. Once I have my picture, I place it on top of my Arch 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I grab some graphite paper. I put it underneath. And then I start to trace the outline of... The shape of the squirrel that I want, you know, get all the little details of his eye, his ears, his body, the tail, do some little sprays, get that all in, you know, just by tracing that in on the paper for the initial part of it. I you know this helps me guide for, you know, basically his shape and like position and where it's going to be on the paper. You know, it takes a little bit of time, but um, it's worth it. I should note this is a photograph from a friend named Leray. She lives in the Pacific Northwest and takes amazing photographs of animals and all kinds of wildlife. It's amazing. Once that's done, I take it off and I set to take my like a regular number two pencil and I will just sketch out even more all the little details of the squirrel. Um, I'll zoom in and show you a little bit of how I'm doing this. So I'm just really sketching in his ears and his body and everything else. Um, even the details of the the fur coming off the tail and the detail of the I'm putting an acorn in his hand it doesn't really show that in the photograph but I decided to put that in you can see I'm just kind of like speeding this up but I'm just sketching it as fast as I can like <laughs> according to <laughs> the sped up editing here um, but you see I'm just sketching in like a little rough of the um, the tail and where the hand is going the face the nose the eyes you know, you could actually spend a long time taking the pencil and just drawing out your image and it would be so much easier. It's like almost like filling in like a paint by number when you're washing in the color for uh, the water, color for the uh, squirrel itself. Because the pencil's a nice guide. You know, you can actually use the pencil as detail too. You know, I'm actually shading in some like of the fur of his tail and everything else. It's just, it's a nice look also. I do that with some of my animals that I paint and draw. Nice combination, so it has like a little rough pencilness, pencilness or penciled quality to it. And then I just wash in the uh, watercolor. But you see, I'm just getting all the little details of his body on the paper. And then I'm going to go in in a bit, and I'm going to uh, water wash in the watercolor right over the the drawing that I did. It really helps to do an underdrawing sometimes. And if you don't want to show the pencil, by the way just erase it so you can see where you're painting it. But um, sometimes it's nice to have a little pencil marks if you kind of have that look. There you go. So once you see me draw in the whole entire swirl from the photograph, after I had kind of traced out like his outline, um, I'll just go in and start washing in some color. As you can see, he's got grays and beiges and browns. So we'll work with the brown, and I wouldn't necessarily follow the photograph to a T. I'll have some burnt umber, some cabin yellow deep to make that orangey brown. I mean, sorry, yellow brown. Then I have neutral tint color, and I'll mix some burnt umber with that. Oops. And then I'll take the neutral tint itself. I'll mix a little black wash with that. So I have some grays to work with. And the yellow itself, maybe a little bit of orange here. I'm playing around with all these colors kind of mixed together. So I'll just start grabbing some of the gray, just start washing in some color here. See, I'm grabbing the, I put the color down and I'll grab some water from the, um, the water jar. And I always keep my paper towel close by. I'm just gonna loosely wash in some of this gray color. I'll grab a little bit darker grays here and there. But I like to work a little fast, as you can see. It just lends itself to be a really loose kind of 
painting. And now I made a lot of yellow browns. I'm gonna make the brown over here, that burnt umber, and a touch of the neutral tint to it. So we're working with some browns and some grays. So at PCI, I put some brown in here and I'll go back in and I'll add some of the grays. And I'll take my brush, I grab some more water, just kind of pushing this paint around pretty quickly, kind of fast. Now it's hard to see because I kind of drew over it, <laughs> um, but you can get the idea. I took out some of these details by drawing over it. Just going in here and filling in. Like Basically it's great when you can just, if you can draw in the elements first and then kind of go back in and just kind of fill it in. It's kind of like a paint by number, but not really. So here I'm adding some browns around those grays. One more brown. This is that neutral tint mixed with the burnt number. And it might necessarily, and I have, it seems like a little blue hue back here because of, this, of the sun hitting it and the way that the time of day it is. So I'll add some ultramarine to my neutral tint. And I'll give it a little bluish kind of hue going here. And I'll put some of that color in the tail. So you can just take it, and by the way, I'm using a, I didn't even mention it, Princeton uh, 8 long round brush. I'm grabbing some of this grays that I've mixed up and some browns. See, I'm kind of mixing both of them in there, in and out. Then I grab some water. Maybe I splash too much water. And some browns. So you're getting like all these melted colors because you can see in the tail, a little brown kind of in the center of it. And then there's grays in the outskirts of it. I'm just getting the feeling of like the loose tail. Now, if you mess up, like, you know, you painted too much and you don't have any like, you can see some of the white tips and stuff like that. It's when you go back in with your gouache and you can uh, add that. And some brown in here. Great, I'm working really fast though. You see how I'm working really fast with this, just with this brush alone, just to get that loose look. And here's that yellowish tint right in here, yellow, orange kind of tint right in here. And lighter part of his belly area. And then it gets pretty dark around in here. Right, and going back in here and getting darker. So building up, adding some more of that dark color, add some of that blue color. You can see it's like a blue gray. Just you see, I'm just kind of taking my brush, kind of pushing it around like this, really kind of fast. It's hard to, sh I, I mean, I probably should put it in smaller paper so you could see both at the same time easier but this is kind of how I do it. So I'm, all these colors you can see me grabbing, you kind of want them all mixed up and you just kind of go back and forth grabbing them, kind of bleeding them into each other in certain areas. See how it's darker in here. I'm grabbing some of that neutral tint. It's much darker down the bottom here. Then we have those browns. Put some burnt umber right in there. I'm gonna grab some of that neutral tint and go right over that. He seems to have like a bluish gray tone to him. It could be the lighting and whatnot. And there's just like all these little stones here. Now I'm gonna do my artistic expression. I'm not gonna keep it as the photograph. I am going to add elements that I want to. Since this normally is a floral Friday, I'm gonna add some kind of floral fauna around this little squirrel. See how I went and just added some deeper marks in here. It's still kind of wet, so it's gonna bleed a little bit. I'm going back in here. Right in here is that orangey yellow kind of tone. I'll grab some of my brilliant orange, mix in with some of those other colors I had. Let me get that color in there, right in here. 
take your tip of the brush and kind of wisp out some little wisps so it looks like it's the fur. Same thing in here. Now we've got to get a little bit darker around here. Again. It's more of a brown, gray, blue kind of combo. Just keep playing around with adding all that. Again, I'll take my tip of my brush and kind of push out some of the paint, get that fur look. If you want to get real technical, you can make a bunch of little spots, but I'm, I really want it to be washed very simply, simple, easy, easy breezy. And then inside the ear, obviously it's gonna be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna those deeper grays. So I'm gonna go in here and make this ear, the inner ear a little bit darker. And I'm going down here to the nose area, adding in some more dull, darker grays. A little dark color out here by his nose. And here we're just kind of finessing it, adding in some, you see these deeper browns and blacks. Just kind of playing around with these grays. All right, so I'm gonna just keep going a little bit here. As you see, I'm talking as I'm doing this, adding in some of the little bit deeper, darker browns. Kind of wash those in a little bit. It's browns and grays, so I'm gonna push in the brown first. See, I'm just gonna push it on my side of my brush. You know, I just kind of push that color. Go back over here in his little hands. And then as that dries, I'll add in some of the blue grays. You can see more blue gray out here. Still damp, adding in that blue gray out here in the outer ear. And again, just take some little wisps from your paintbrush. Not a million of them. He's got a few out here on the back of his head. And you know, if you see like a deep blue spot, don't worry about that, that's kind of cool. It's like, you got some variety of color in here in this little squirrel. See, I'm not so technically bogged down to the details of of what, um, how he's supposed to look. I'm just going to bleed in some more browns. I mean, some this deep, deep gray. I feel like you're losing some real technical stuff. And then you see in the tail, it's a little bit deeper and darker again, up and in here. And I'm just going to go in there with my brush, minimal water. I always kind of tap the extras on my paper towel. And I'll just go in here and I'll add some more of those sprays. You saw me do earlier. And just like that. Let's not get that has to dry, and then we're gonna just put a little acorn. I mix up some burnt umber, some neutral tint to that. And I'll do his little acorn he's holding. You don't really see him holding it in the picture. I kind of exaggerated it, made my own little acorn in here. You can see he's somewhat holding something. I still can't tell what it is. So I decided it's gonna be an acorn. So I kind of made that predominant, like you can see that. Zoom that in. And then for the eye, I'm gonna grab my number four Princeton long round. It's neutral tint, it's some gouache. It's pretty dark. It's like a bluish gray black eye. Now you can see around the hair, there's like a light beige color. I mean, you can't see because I can't, <laughs> I'm zoomed in so you can't see. So add in a little beige color around where the eye, the white part is. So it's not so white. 
that you get that it's late. And I'll let that dry. And then I'm gonna come in with the, the black tone and leave that halo. With my little brush, it's just more, much easier to paint with that. I'm gonna split a little bit because the lighter color was still wet. So I just took a paper towel And I'll fix that. And if you just go ahead and you paint it over that special area where he has the eyeball, you can just go take some white gouache and fix that. Now, again, with this little brush, you grab some of this darker grays and you can start to just kind of like, it's still wet, bleed in, or just tap in. See, I'm just do, 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 making these little taps, the darker color. And then I'll wash in some more of that dark color around his ears. Now that I have the smaller brush, I have more control. I'm just kind of highlighting the ear and I can easily make those little fuzzy marks with this brush. See, just making little fuzzy marks, smaller brush. If you just do these little, see how I'm just kind of maneuvering the brush like this, we'll give the kind of look of fur and having to make every single little minutia detail of of the fur. Just kind of go like that. This is still kind of wet, but we can still try and play around with adding in some of the deeper color. And then highlighting the fingers again. Little scroll hands. <laughs> All right, but you guys get the drift. See, so just taking a little brush and you're making those little marks. And you can come back in here and play and adding some darker tone again. While it's still damp, it will bleed less. So you have some marks and then some that bleed into it, which is kind of nice. See, so I'm doing this tap of the dark color. So you can get that look. And then some wisps out here. This is my little squirrel. And you can add, again, go back in. There's another one's gonna dry, some little more details. They will dry lighter. So you can go back in here with the ears. Sometimes all these little details add up. I'll add some more brown and some gray. See, I put that big wash color in and I don't like it, so I'm gonna take some water and just kind of push it around so it makes more sense. All right. And then I'll fix this little hands. That needs to have a little more detail, so I'll have to wait till that dries and go back in and I'll add some more detail to that. So it doesn't look like these weird looking things just sitting there. You know that it's hands. So in the meantime, I'm gonna zoom back out, and grab my number eight again, play around with the bottom area here with the grasses. I might add some green. So I've got my <clears throat> peacock blue. I've already mixed it with some of those browns in here. And my yellow. Get me yellow deep, and I'll add some burnt umber. So I have some greens with these browns and grays. Make it more fun. All right, and the browns. See how I got all these browns and grays and greens. You can have them sitting on the rocks, you know, like the gray rocks. So I'm just kind of doing this like half moon shape. Sitting on rocks, grass, I can add some brown. Just really loose like this. Get the green in there. See, kind of go wah, wah, wah. 
So it's going to have the brown, it's going to have the gray, it's going to have the green. More on the grass. Now add some brown, neutral tint, and brown umber. I didn't want to do all the gray. I think that was gray after gray after gray. To me, as an artist, this is when you take your artistic liberty and you change it. See, I'm just making the swoopy grasses with the green that weren't even in the picture. And then you can make some come up here, out here, like another special one. And you can add some blooms to that. Going in, adding some brown and some neutral tint. And some Prussian blue. Just to darken up some of the greens. See if I just changed that picture. <laughs> And then decide what kind of blooms you might want to do. I'll take Brilliant Orange, since it's kind of keeping in the fall tones. I mixed it with some of the browns that I have over here. Let's play around with just making like a poppy kind of color, mini flower. So you see, I'm just taking the brush, holding it on its side, and kind of just making this kind of fun shape. Again, holding it side, kind of like, like a teardrop the opposite way and then little sprays on the other side and then maybe little buds down here right and then I'll go over here and kind of flank the other side just simple you can put some in the background too of him but I want to keep him kind of center so I'm not going to do that zoom back up and then I'll add deeper orange tones by adding more brilliant orange, maybe some magenta, mix in some burnt umber. Get a little deeper, deep orange red. See, I'm kind of just tapping it next to the orange itself. Or kind of in the bottom where it hits the, the stem. You can add some yellow ones too. Don't be afraid to keep playing around with adding some more blooms. Maybe I'll add some yellow blooms, just simple yellow flowers. Almost like just taking the tip of your brush and kind of making this simple. They look like little mums. And then I'll go back in and add some brown stems. So with my burnt umber and my neutral tint, mix together, but watered down. Or I just make maybe more like a mustard yellow kind of brown kind of color. So I've got that yellow, mix some brown in there. This burnt umber. Even grab that neutral tint that I had. We can make some like wheat kind of stuff. So the stem, take the tip of your brush, just push down some simple like wheat looking stems. And this is how you would take a photograph of a simple animal. I showed you how to do the animal. And then you just kind of change it up for yourself. Do I want to do something back here? Maybe I will put some wheat behind him. Wheat. Kind of grasses. This is how I would kind of create an animal that's more of a design and decorative element than just the actual realistic animal itself. And I'll go back in and I'll add some deeper greens. See, I'm just kind of moving around kind of fast. Some browns. And some greens again. The grass. And some browns. Playing around with this little squirrel guy. That's how I kind of create this kind of stuff. And like I said, I'll go back in for, you know, I don't want to talk about this anymore, but before I discussed the squirrel, I'll go in and add some deeper colors where I feel like it needs it. It's missing. And then the hands, of course. 
I will zoom in again and fix the hands because now that's dry. I'm gonna add the detail of the little hands. Which might have gotten lost. And then some shadow under the acorn he's holding. Just like that. You know, it's not the perfect looking squirrel, but it's good enough for me. And I'll add some more deeper colors in here. I feel like I need some bright orange in here. I've seen the photograph. And then I can go add some of the browns and grays again. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You get the idea of it's a squirrel. And he's holding the nut. And he's being a silly squirrel. And this is how I do it. Like, so you take a photograph. If you took one of a squirrel, you can blow it up on your um, computer, if you have a computer, or your iPad. And then just trace that. And then you add the elements like I just showed you here. See, I'm going back in with this little brush and adding in some fur again. Get a little bit darker on the bottom here. And back under the undercoat here. Playing around with it too much, actually. So that's it. <laughs> that's my Floral Friday. Different kind of Floral Friday. I wanted to do some animals. I haven't done animals here in a while, so I decided to do that. You can get really detailed going back in here to the wheat and adding in deeper tones. But, you know, I just showed you basically a fast way of how I just throw them in there. If you want them really detailed, you can go back in there and do all this with the little brush. This is the number four Princeton long round. That was a splat, and I continued the splat in here. So it makes, you know, can also add some nice berries. You know, I didn't even think of that. That would look pretty also. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification, please hit the bell notification. And uh, yeah, thanks guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.